In our work is truly trying to think about how we can create this sense of encounter, of experience. The performance work serves almost like a mirror, that in seeing the performance, the audience can also see themselves. And so this idea uh, in our work of really trying to defamiliarize the familiar, to make what's known unknown. Hi, my name is Craig Quintero and I'm the artistic director of the Taipei-based Riverbed Theatre. My backstory is kind of an interesting and long and winding road. I first came to Taiwan in 1992 to study Chinese opera. And at the point, even though I realized I would never become a famous Chinese opera performer, I was really interested in the structural integrity of the art form. The way that there's, um, the audiences have to learn how to see a show, to interpret what the makeup means or the movement means. That it's a process of the audience has to sort of learn how to encounter the work. And so I came here for one year to study Chinese opera, and one year led to two years, which led to the past uh, 31 years of my life. Um, in 1998, I had the immense uh, pleasure of forming Riverbed Theatre Company with a group of visual and performing artists here. And for our second production, um, Burnt Rice, you can already really start to see a lot of um, our aesthetics or the different ideas that we're exploring in our work started to emerge. Uh, the piece was staged at its elite art space. It was a small um, venue, maybe about 100, 120 audience members. And if you look at the work, there's a really, there's a handmade quality that sort of the artists, the performers in the show were helping us build the environment, um, that there's sort of a tactility to the world. It's not just that there's a set behind the performers, but the set is an actual character in the work. Also, we started developing this idea of image-based theater. It was largely inspired by the work of Robert Wilson. Um, and so this idea, instead of where a lot of scripts start off with a script um, and they have like, this is my character and these are my lines and this is my motivation, and we start off with a very sort of set structure, our work really sort of begins with this idea of um, almost creating like a living painting or a living sculpture. And so these images that sort of pass by the audience, not telling a specific story, but creating this, this meditative space for the audience to experience the work and reflect on themselves. And from this early piece, Burnt Rice, it sort of led to our continued exploration. So in the year 2000, we did a piece at the Gulingjie uh, Little Theater, which is an old police station. And we covered the stage floor with uh, two tons of coffee grounds. And so you'd enter the space, and so the smell of the, the environment, the way that it wasn't just, I'm seeing the performance, but these other senses became engaged in the work. It's completely transforming um, the world around them. And so this idea uh, in our work of really trying to defamiliarize the familiar, that audiences might have gone to Guling Theater a number of times before, and then suddenly they're re-entering the space, and it's radically different. To make what's known, unknown. And so it's this recurring theme throughout our work, is like taking these experiences and the slight shift or spinning of them. Uh, and continuing with our work, uh, in 2003, we had the opportunity to do our first production at the National Experimental Theater. And so this was the first time in this large black box space, about 200 people in the audience. And so to see the size of our canvas begin to grow. And as it's continuing to grow, we continue to have this um, integration of visual and performing arts, where you can see like the hand painted uh, tactility of the walls, the space would be shifting around the audience. And again, immersing the audience in the world around us. Uh, with the opening of Hua Shan Art Space, which was an old plum wine factory which was converted into an art space in about 2000, we did our first uh, big work there in 2003 called um, The Futurist Cookbook. And for that we took this uh, cookbook written by F.T. Marinetti as part of the Futurist movement, and then we built this space inside the space so the audience would enter into our world and they literally have to duck down, they'd pass through a corridor, and we built this 30 foot by 30 foot, foot space with eight foot tall ceilings, and so the audience was fully immersed in our world, and so all the, the colors, the lights, the smells, the sensations were all part of the artwork. And it was really the shift, uh, it was an important shift for us, it was like taking the, the spectacle from out here and putting it inside of us, that we're inside the work. And so this recurring theme, as you look at sort of the way our work progressed, is thinking about how each time to create this, this experiment, where we're pushing up against um, what is known or what we've done before and continuing to sort of push the boundaries. And so we've done work inspired by Robert Wilson, uh, Rene Magritte, Yoyoi Kusama, 
the Taiwanese poet uh, Xia Yu. Um, and then in a number of our sort of, our, our sort of larger works we've been doing recently, we did a piece inspired by David Lynch. And we also did um, a piece in 2018 called The First Time uh, I Walked on the Moon. And for this piece, it was really sort of an interesting encounter where the audience was sitting up on 10-foot tall risers looking down on the stage floor. We had two projectors overhead which were projecting on the stage surface. And so the whole stage floor became this, this moving canvas. And so instantaneously we could switch from the ocean to a grass, or we could have like these um, images of digitally uh, mediated or altered forms transforming in front of the audience in real time. And so suddenly, again, shifting the perspective of the audience, even though they weren't immersed inside the work, visually this tipping down of their perspective enabled something different to happen. And so over the course of our riverbeds development, we went from rehearsing in my brother's apartment where our rehearsal space was the size of a large closet, uh, to growing larger and performing the National Experimental Theater. And with each production, the scale of the work was increasing. And as it sort of was increasing, obviously it was exciting because we'd experiment with new spaces, with new different relationships between the performer and the audience. But in 2011, we really started to feel separated from the audience, that there was a gap between us. And so in 2011, we started um, probably our most important performance series, the Just For You series, in which we started creating these performances for an audience of one. So each performance, only one person would see the show. And so when we initially started off the, I, this project, I approached our producer, Su Ling, and I was like, what if we do this performance and there's only one audience member? And Su Ling's like, um, hmm, financially it's going to be hard to uh, sustain this model. But she's like, yeah, let's try. And so from this initial experiment of taking this intimacy of performance and this exploration, um, it sort of grew into 10 years of doing these really um, intimate encounters between the performer and the audience where the actors weren't performing into the darkness of a large auditorium, that they were performing just for you, directly for the person in front of them. And in this encounter, there was amazing sort of the audience's responses, like after watching a 10 or 12 minute show, uh, we once did this piece at the uh, Taichung, the National Museum in Taichung, and the audience, like eight of the 10 people came out were in tears. And they weren't crying for Romeo or for Juliet or for an abstract character, they were crying for themselves that through this process of seeing these abstract images, it touched something inside of them and moved them. And so in our work is truly trying to think about how we can create this sense of encounter, of experience. We're almost uh, in a way that the, the performance work serves almost like a mirror, that in seeing the performance, the audience can also see themselves. And so based on this experiences, um, we also recently have shifted into virtual reality where we're taking um, this performance from an audience of one, which is a live performance, where we could have taste and touch and smell and all these sensations and putting it in a virtual world. And so we lose sort of the tactility or the sensory elements, but we really gain something with VR, with just the intimacy of the encounter. And so when we premiered our first work, All the Remains in Venice in 2022, it was really amazing to see something that had started off as these really small, intimate performances staged for maybe 20 people or 50 people in Taiwan, suddenly being able to share our work with a global audience. Uh, he Chuang is Taiwan's very unique theater company. The theater company. The theater company is that the main point is not in telling stories. 而是在于一种一些非常有创意的，呃，剧场里面的形象、声音，简直像魔法一样，好把整个剧场变成一个呃，可以像梦一样自由出入、自由转换的空间，让观众仿佛堕入梦中，然后进入一场呃不可能重复、也不可能预期的一种艺术体验。和床剧团的演出通常会让我们比较回到内在世界，回到个人的自己的体验。好，它不像看别人的故事，就是你好像都会投入别人的故事。但和床虽然那是一些你没有办法想象的意象在梦中出现一样，但是它总是连接到我们个人的恐惧、欲望，呃，一些神秘的经验。哦，我觉得会让观众不断的回到自己。
一般我们贴标签呢、啊，叫做啊什么那个意象剧场，或者是什么潜意识的剧场、梦幻的剧场。那这些东这些标签，事实上它就方便我们指认出它的一个特色。事实上，我觉得它不是整个全全面。我觉得意象剧场有它非常理性、逻辑的一面。为了让潜意识能够流动，你必须非常理性。啊，像这个东西，我觉得我们都可以在合床剧团、在郭文泰以及他的整个团员在创作的过程、创作的成果，我们都可以看得出来。In 2021, we also had the first opportunity to stage The Forgotten at the Taiwan National Theater. And this was our first time going from, again, you know, it's hard to imagine our first piece at Assignment Theater, a coffee shop, where it was about 40 audience members, to suddenly we were performing this piece in a 1,500-seat theater. And suddenly, as we're shifting the scale, then we can play with um, these different elements and these different sort of creative possibilities, something different can happen. And so it suddenly became a really different way of visually composing the work, but still maintaining that same sort of integrity of like, how do we create this artistic experience? Is it, in a painter, you know, when you paint on a canvas, if the audience looks here first, how do you guide their eyes through the work and through the space? And the same idea of taking it now on the, the performance stage, how do we sort of take the audience here and then have the space almost expand and contract and really sort of be breathing in front of the audience? It's like this living organism that's shifting and growing and changing and evolving in front of the audience's eyes. And so for the past 25 years, we've been creating these experimental theater works and at our, we're celebrating our 25th anniversary. We're really excited to think about what's to come over the next 25 years, going from performing to an audience of one to a 1500 seat theater to virtual reality. Each time as we're performing these productions, it's asking a new question, searching for a new set of answers, which then provide the next step. And so uh, here's to 25 years and we're looking to 25 more.